York Dolls guitarist Johnny Thunders was found dead on the floor of a guest house in the French Quarter of New Orleans on Tuesday afternoon of causes as yet unspecified at the age of 38. When I first heard about my dad's death, I didn't know who he was. And I heard my mom yelling on the phone. She says, your dad died. And I said, what? She said, your dad died. I was already in my 20s when I met Johnny. He was, uh, he'd come from Queens. And me and Johnny met, and Sil, and then David, and Arthur, and then we formed the Dolls. Uh, do you remember when you first got in contact with drugs? That whole drug era in the late 60s, for some reason, uh, even though most kids my age are getting into drugs, I never got into it, really. Not even smoking pot, not drinking, no hard drugs. But it seemed like after it was all over, and I was already in my late 20s, 27, 28 already, and uh, it was after the doll even were over, um, I started experimenting with drugs, and uh, unfortunately with the wrong kind of drugs, hard, real hardcore uh, addicting drugs like, like heroin. You do. Uh, and me and Johnny sort of got into that at first for a while. At the same time, or had he been on it for a longer time? No, no, not really. Like I said, very late in life. And uh, but, but it's such an addictive drug, it was a little too late before we found out enough information about it, before we realized what we were getting into. It was much too late. I mean, I play music, that's what I do. You know, I'm not a professional drug taker. You know, some people might look at it as a romantic uh, type of thing where they say, wow, I guess they're that good because they're on drugs. But that is, that is definitely not so. I think uh, a, music, a, a musician that just sticks to his art uh, and spends more time on that than he does on drugs or anything else has more chance of creating a lot more. You know? I think drugs really do interfere with your creativity. I know it has with me. I know it has with people I know who are on drugs. Do you remember why you started? Just having a good time. I mean, there was no, uh, nothing to escape from or nothing like that. There was no, uh, problems like a lot of kids start because they, uh, you know, they're bored and lonely and, you know, it makes them feel like they're, they're alive, I guess. It's just it, but having fun. Most every gig I go to, there's all kinds of young kids, all kinds of people coming in trying to turn you on with drugs and stuff like that. Trying to turn you on? Well, well, a lot of people show up at gigs with drugs, maybe to impress you, to, you know, or to, to uh, set up some kind of a relationship with you. You know, they think that's the way to make to to get your attention, which it's not. They don't know that. I do. I've been doing it for 22 some odd years. I've been playing. You know. So I'm used to this. They're not used to it. Most of these kids, it's new to them. They don't realize that all you got to do is sit down and talk normal to make friends. I mean, I would never, uh, first of all, uh, turn anyone on to drugs. I think it's, you know, it's a hard thing to handle, you know. And um, once you get into it, it's really rough to get out of. We're playing a show somewhere in Michigan. In college down Grand Rapids or Lansing or something. And uh, it was like on their New Wave night, New Wave Wednesday or whatever. And, and the place was fucking packed. I mean, they were lined up. We were into a percentage, you know. We were going to make a pile of money. And we're using the, the club's office as a dressing room. He's going to move to Queens, I heard. And Johnny's in there in the drawer stealing the club's money. I said, let's get the fuck out of here right now. So we pack up all our shit. He gives my girlfriend a big stack of bills and she goes what do I do when I said get rid of the fucking money so she goes in a ladies room and stuffs it all under the behind the toilet or something and then the cops come out and separate us all and start asking us where's the money and the guys are going through the office and they're going through the desks and all that and they're adding up the money's gone the club's receipts are gone and at this point it, it, I would have I would have kicked his little Italian ass up and down the street you know I've, I've always told everyone this Started, started doing it, you know, they don't know what they're in for, you know. It's not, you know, 
leave you. I, uh, how would you say it has affected your mind and your music? My mind? Yeah. I don't think it's done anything to my mind. Or my music. Because, you know, I've played rock and roll before I started taking drugs and play rock and roll now. Would you have been a, uh, a better rock and roll a musician if you hadn't started with drugs? I don't you know say? if I would have been better, but I would have been a successful, you know, successful a long time ago. Uh, successful in what terms? I don't know, out of money. But that's not why you play. No. But still you, you I mean, it helps. Yeah. But you wanted to get out of the drugs. I didn't ever want really to stop. So you, you don't have uh, a will to get rid of the drugs for yourself? I don't find them as a major problem. I mean, I think, I think every artist that ever said something to the people that they listen to, you know, was hooked on something, I'm sure. about your future dreams when you were 10, 15. Uh, what about your future dreams right now? My dreams right now? Yeah. A lot of dreams. To get away from uh, society, get an island somewhere, and just, and just live there. That would mean you people, see people, so many people, you know, thinking they know what, what I am and what I'm trying to do, and nobody knows what I, what I am and what I want to be and what I want to say. Do I feel guilty about an imperfect life? It's time for me to take what's mine. I don't want to live in the present. I make myself ill, at times I'm happy But society makes me sad My past involves my future I have to manifest my destiny 